Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India have the discussion on this uh, ramjet scramjet and all these uh, who or rather pulse jet so the uh, those kind of engines they don't have any rotating part now we are moving to the discussion of kind of engine like jet engines uh, turbo jet or turbo fan kind of engines um, where the important component is that it has the rotating parts that means the compressor turbine so now onwards the discussion will be on this uh, turbo jet turbo fan or turbo ramjet or turbo propeller kind of engines where you always get to see some kind of a rotating components and how the basic gas generator added to the turbine and compressor and how they uh, behave together and we will be looking at the cycle analysis i mean especially the aero thermodynamic analysis and other advantage and disadvantage so let's start with the uh, talking about this turbine based engine let's say we'll call it turbine based uh, engine so the advantage of this kind of turbine based engine over uh, over uh, piston engine is that it has uh, higher power to weight ratio that is number one need less maintenance per flying hour per flying hour and also less frontal area and consequently less drag okay so these are uh, basic these things now we'll start with that one which is called turbo jet and the first thing that we will look at a let's look at a picture of uh, this is a layout of a this is a single spool configuration and then this one is a twin spool configuration of a turbo jet engine so this is uh, i mean there are different example but this is how it looks like that kind of i mean when we talk about single spool and when we talk about twin spool i mean the basic difference you can see here um, i mean just to give you an idea here a compressor here is the turbine they are connected with the single shaft and obviously in between there is a combustor then there will be nozzle when you talk about the twin spool this is what is your so called lpc this is hpc this would be hpt and this is lpt so hpt and hpc they are connected with a one shaft lpt and uh, lpc they are connected that I mean low pressure compressor low pressure turbine connected to a one shaft high pressure compressor and turbine connected to a two shaft so that's where it makes it to a spool configuration so that's the basic difference lies in between this configuration now the other thing is that also you can see classification of this turbo jet that means it could have uh, two major category one is the nuclear type another is non nuclear type okay then uh, or there could be another way to look at it so or one can have some other way j uh, that after burning or non after burning that means either you will have after burner or you will not have or one can have single spool 
or dual spool ok. Now, in single spool you can have axial flow compressor, you can have centrifugal compressor and you can have axial centrifugal compressor. Then again ex centrifugal compressor it could have single entry or it could be uh, double entry. So, these are some of the classification that one can have even in turbojet engine, but as soon as you see there is an uh, strictly axial flow compressor or uh, then you do not have I mean when you go to dual spool then you do not see this uh, subdivision of a different kind of compressor because when you go to multi spool configuration pretty much uh, you need axial uh, compressors and now, now first we will start with an sort of an single spool engine and then uh, look at the um, so this is a configuration of a single spool engine and uh, this at one you have uh, air flows from the first stream so this is really far upstream and then 1 to 2 this is where it is an intake. So, this intake what happens is that air flows through this inlet or ducting system to the compressor inlet since this always considered this to be a diffuser. So, the air velocity always decreases 2 to 3 this is an uh, compression which is done through a uh, dynamic compressor which does this compression then 3 to 4. So, this is 3 to 4 is your um, uh, combustion chamber where the fuel is burned, fuel is injected there and heat is added to the incoming these things. Then this is where the turbine or expansion takes place where the hot gases which are allowed to pass through the turbine then 5 to 6. So, this is a after burner it is not necessarily always be there if it is there then it would be further the mixture gas which comes out of the turbine that can be further heated up and added some more energy and 6 to 7 is the nozzle again which pass accelerate through the nozzle to get the desired. Now, here just to uh, then we can do some of this. Now, few comments which are there that all components are irreversible, but they are adiabatic except burners. So, the isentropic efficiencies of intake, compressor, turbine and nozzles this would be considered that is there. Then like in the diffuser portion of the intake there would be friction. So, obviously we need to consider the diffuser efficiency to take into account. Then the compressor also, the compression of the air is the uh, inside the compressor will increase pressure temperature and there would be also entropy increase due to irreversibility. So, also compressor efficiency. So, typically the diffuser efficiency um, let us say vary between 0.9 to 0.7, compressor efficiency vary between 0.85 to 9 that means then you have the combustor, combustor efficiency is quite high. So, there it would be pretty much 0.97 then there is a turbine, turbine efficiency is also high and then finally, there is an if there is an after burner that also have efficiency high. Um, 
like 0 0.97 and then finally, if you have nozzle, nozzle efficiency also quite high. So, these are the things which are there. Now, we can draw the TS diagram and then um, So, we draw the TS diagram, let us say So, we have 1, we want to go to 2, 2 to go to 3, 3 to go to 4, 4 to 5, then 6, then 7. Okay. So, this is 7, this is 0, 06, 0, 05, 0, 04. So, uh, this is 0, 03, this is 0, 02, this is 1, okay. so this is um, let us say without after burner and this is actual um, actual cycle T s diagram, actual cycle T s diagram without after burner or without after burner, without A B or another T s diagram which could be looking like this, where 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6 and then 7. So, this case, this is 1, this is 2 or 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, this is 0, 5, 0, 6, A, 7, A. So, so this is an actual cycle with A B. Okay. So, when the after burner is on or other a operative conditions. So, we will start with uh, let us say intake. So, that is uh, we will start with the intake. Now, so here that air is decelerated and since the velocity at 2 is assumed to be 0, the deceleration is adiabatic. So, the um, total and stagnation states at 0 and 1 are equal. So, we can correlate between station A 1 and 2 that T naught 2 is T naught 1 and T naught A which is T A 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square. Now, outside the engine this would be P naught A equals to P A 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square which is gamma by gamma minus 1. So, the total pressure which remains constant. Now, there is a pressure recovery within the inlet may be given. So, the R D is P naught 2 by P naught A and also the efficiency eta D needs to be accounted for which will give us P naught 2 equals to P A 1 plus eta D gamma C minus 1 by 2 m a square gamma c by gamma c minus 1. So, that is what we will get. From there we will come to compressor. So, that is let us say first 2 is compressor, where compressor it is 2 to 3. So, this is also irreversible adiabatic compression process where it takes place the isentropic efficiency of the compressor is eta c, there is a pressure ratio let us say pi c, then uh, what we can write P naught 3 is P naught 2 into pi c and T naught 3 would be T naught 2 into 1 plus pi c gamma c minus 1 by gamma c 
minus 1 divided by eta c. So, that is what you get in compressor. Now, the third component would be combustion chamber. This is the process between 3 to 4. So, here the fuel is injected, these are atomized, if it is liquid fuel evaporated and then the ignition takes place. So, the from energy balance equation what we can write here m dot a plus m dot a C P H T naught 4 equals to m dot a C P C T naught 3 plus eta b m dot a p q r. So, here the temperature at the exit of the combustor is T naught 4 which is going to be the entry to the turbine. This T naught 4 is called the turbine inlet temperature or turbine entry temperature. So, this is important this temperature what is shown here this is T i t or T e t turbine entry temperature or turbine inlet temperature and this guy is essentially to some extent predetermined during the design process because the turbine material has a limit to withstand the temperature. So, once you know the material of the turbine blade, then you have certain limit of the temperature that you cannot go beyond that is where it is going to come into the picture and restrict the rest of the operation inside the combustion chamber. And so, one of the important uh, parameter is this turbine inlet temperature which you can see now this controls the whole design process towards the upstream and the downstream because turbine blade material has a limit of withstanding the temperature and that is going to come and that will limit the exit temperature of the combustor accordingly whatever happens in the uh, combustor and upstream section. So, turbine inlet temperature or TET or TIT that is an one of the design parameter for this turbine engine. Okay. Having said that, now we can find out the fuel air ratio and other properties like the pressure at the exit of the combustor which would be P naught 4 that is P naught 3 minus delta P C C and so that gives so P naught 4 would be P naught 3 into 1 minus delta P C C percentage. Now, the fourth one is the turbine. So, this is where the, the power consumed by the compressor is generally produced by the turbine. So, if the ratio of the power needed to drive the compressor to the power available in the turbine is lambda, then compressor input would be eta mechanical efficiency lambda into W t. So, typical values of lambda which is in the range of 75 to 85 percent. So, you can see that 15 to 25 percent of the turbine power goes back to run the compressor and, uh, and the mechanical efficiency is also important parameter that is the shaft which transmit. So, that is roughly 98 percent of the efficiency. Now, once you put that when we do this then CPC so, this is called compression turbine power mapping T naught 2 equals to lambda eta m and 1 plus f C p h T naught 4 minus T naught 5. So, T naught 5 by T naught 4 this would be 1 minus C p c by C p h where T naught 2 lambda eta m 1 plus m T naught 4. So, here T naught 3 by T naught 2 minus 1. Now, the outlet pressure is calculated considering the effic adiabatic efficiency of the turbine. Let us say P naught 5 by P naught 4 equals to 1 minus eta turbine. 1 minus T naught 5 by T naught 4 gamma H by gamma H minus 1. 
So, then the turbine and compressor pressure ratios are correlated uh, like P naught 5 by P naught 4. So, these are 1 minus C P C by C P H T naught 2 lambda 1 plus F eta m eta c eta t t naught 4 into p naught 3 by p naught 2 gamma c minus 1 by gamma c minus 1 whole to the power gamma h by gamma h minus 1. Or in general one can write in general one can write pi t is 1 minus a where let us say if we say uh, this particular factor is capital A then we can write pi t equals to 1 minus a pi c gamma c minus 1 gamma c minus 1 gamma h by gamma h minus 1. Okay. So, what we get then? We get P naught 5 by P naught 4 equals to 1 minus say C P C by C P H T A lambda 1 plus F eta m eta c eta t t naught 4 1 plus gamma minus 1 by m square p naught 3 by p naught 2 gamma c by in gamma minus 1 this is gamma h by gamma h minus 1. So, this is what we get. Now, the one is a b or after burner. Now, there could be two cases. So, if the jet engine is within an after burner, then then no work or heat transfer takes place between turbine and the nozzle. Um, so, the stagnation enthalpy remains constant, but if there is an after burner, the things would be. So, there could be case A without a b, then uh, what we can see that from the T naught 6 would be T naught 5 and then what we will get P naught 6 is be P naught 5 minus delta P A B or P naught 6 is P naught 5 1 minus delta P A B percentage or case B where we have the after burner then uh, T naught 6 A would be T max. So, in this case the additional fuel is burned and here again the after burner there would be some energy balance like m dot a f a b q r what was coming m dot a 1 plus f c p h t naught 5 then this is m dot a 1 plus f plus f after burner c p h t naught 6. So, this is the amount of extra fuel which is again injected in the, but what may possibly happen the temperature which is going to be after burner which may be higher than the turbine inlet temperature. The reason for such higher temperature is possible because and the extra set of combustion or the takes place. So, but this should not create a lot of trouble, uh, trouble as long as the internal body can handle the temperature because there is no rotating component or turbine attached in that. So, just to complete this portion of the analysis, let us say m dot 6 which would be m dot f plus m dot f after burner and conservation of energy would give 
m dot 5 h not 5 plus eta a b m dot a b q r which is m dot 6 h 6 a. So, what we can write this m dot 5 h not 5 plus eta a b m dot f a b q r m dot 5 plus m dot c p 6 a t not 6 a. So, this is 1 plus a c p 5 t not 5 plus eta a b f a b q r which is 1 plus a plus f a b into c p 6 a t not 6 a. Now, once we rearrange that, what we will get? If a b equals to 1 plus f c p 6 a t not 6 a minus c p 5 t not 5, which is eta a b q r minus c p 6 a t not 6 a. Now, similarly, we will go to the nozzle. Nozzle also will have two different uh, situation, case A, where without a b. So, if there is without a b and so first thing one has to check the nozzle for choking by critical pressure um, like 1 by 1 plus eta n uh, sorry minus nozzle efficiency by gamma n minus 1 gamma n plus 1 to the power gamma n by gamma n minus 1. So, when the critical pressure is then compared with the ambient pressure. So, if it is greater than or equal to ambient pressure, then the nozzle is choked. Uh, so, in that case M 7 would be 1, this means the P 7 would be P C and so T naught 6 by T 7 would be gamma n plus 1 by 2 and the exhaust velocity would be root over gamma n uh, gamma n R T 7. Now, on the other hand, if the ambient pressure is greater than the critical pressure, then the nozzle is unchoked. So, this is a situation where this is choked. If it is unchoked, then the P 7 would be P atmospheric, then the V 7 would be 2 C P H uh, C P n T naught 6 minus T naught 7. So, which if you write this would be 2 C P n eta n T naught 6 1 minus P a by P naught 6 gamma n minus gamma n. So, or other words it is root over 2 gamma n eta n r t naught 6 divided by gamma n minus 1, 1 minus p a by p naught 6 gamma n minus gamma. So, this is a situation where this is uh, unchoked. So, every time one has to check whether it is choked or it is unchoked. Similarly, with the case with after burner also we will look at it, but every time when you will deal with the nozzle, you need to check the critical pressure at the nozzle exit and you have to make sure uh, or rather find out the condition whether the nozzle is choked or unchoked and accordingly you get the pressure uh, conditions and the temperature which would be used to calculate the exit velocity. So, we will stop the discussion here and continue in the next class. Thank you.